This video shows how to set up a needle with a tattoo machine. We have a stainless steel stem, grip, and tip, which are collectively called a tube. This is a 13 mag, which is a shading and coloring needle, but the setup would remain the same for a round or lining needle. These needles are pre-made, which means the group of needles at the end is already soldered to the needle bar. The loop at the other end of the bar is called an eye, which is what attaches the needle to the machine. To assemble the tube, we connect the stem and the tip to the grip. This grip happens to use set screws to hold everything together. First, you slide the stem in the back end of the grip and tighten the screw with a hex wrench to secure it in place. Then, do the same at the other end for the tip. Make sure the tip is suited to the needle configuration and size you're using. Also, only insert just enough of the stem or tip into the grip for the screws to secure them in place. If the screws protrude like they do on this grip, you should try to align the screws in a fashion so there's no risk of you potentially ripping your glove. Here we have the screws lined up nicely with the opening in the tip, which will orient them in between and away from my fingers. During use, this minimizes the risk of a glove tear. Once the tube is assembled, we next need to install our nipple or grommet. A nipple is a small rubber component you put on the end of the armature bar or A-bar before the needle is attached. That helps keep the needle eye snug on the A-bar. A grommet serves the same purpose, but it differs from the nipple in that it's inserted into the needle eye first instead of on the A-bar. Grommets are a little bit more difficult to use, but they do keep the needle on the A-bar a little tighter than nipples do. You may find that different grommets and nipples purchased from one company are made from softer or harder rubber than the other. The more pliable the rubber, the softer the needle hit, while the more rigid the rubber, the harder the needle hit. Shop around and when you find a brand you feel most comfortable with, stick with it. Now we're almost ready to place the needle into the tube. Before we do that, we need to create a slight bend in the needle. This helps compensate for the bend applied by the rubber bands you wrap around the needle to help it keep from jumping around in the tube. The bend also helps the needle grouping sit flush in the tip. If you look closely at the needle, you'll see the bar is soldered onto the top of the needle grouping. With the bar on top and the needle configuration on the bottom, bend the needle upwards from the middle slightly. This amount of bend is just about right for a stainless steel tube. However, if you're using disposable tubes, make sure you don't put too much bend on the needle as the plastic tends to create more friction. Make sure you put the needle in with the needle configuration underneath the bar so it will sit in the tip correctly. Carefully insert the needle into the tube. If you have a three-piece tube like we do here, be careful not to bang the needle on the upper edge of the tip that sits inside the tube. You might also need to slightly lift the needle to avoid the edge of the reservoir, which sits just inside the end of the tip. If you feel some resistance while pushing the needle through the tube, do not continue to push and try to force the needle. Instead, pull back on the needle a little, lift it slightly within the tube, and then continue to push. Damaged or barbed needles can lead to skin getting torn up, so take your time when inserting the needle. Once you have the needle in the tube, pick up your machine and slide the tube with the opening in the tip facing upwards up through the vice grip. If the grip is too tight, even with the screws loosened all the way, then you'll need to pry the vice open with a flathead screwdriver. If it's a little snug, you can try twisting the tube back and forth a little like this. With the tube inserted about halfway, tighten the vise. Don't lift the tube up too far into the vise, as the further you put the vise into the tube initially, the more difficult it'll be for you to grab the needle and attach the loop to the A-bar you'll be able to adjust things once the needle is attached to the A-bar. Grab the needle, pull it up towards the armature bar, and attach the eye to it by slipping it over the peg on the end. Be careful not to bend the needle any more than necessary while you're doing this. Now you have the needle attached. You can adjust the tube vertically to correctly set the amount of needle riding depth, which is simply how much needle remains out the end of the tip when the machine is not in use. Loosen the vise and then raise or lower the entire tube to get the depth to your desired measurement. The final step is to attach your rubber bands. We suggest using two or three rubber bands because if one breaks, you don't have to worry about your needle jumping off track while it's in someone's skin. One last tip is that if your vise screw or machine frame is interfering with your hand while working like this, you'll need to move the grip down away from the machine. The way to do this is to adjust the overall length of the tube by decreasing the amount of stem that's in the grip when you initially put your tube together.